very strange uh, that your level of access it depends on the medium. Like you said, that when watching TV in Poland, you find less accessibility than in the United Kingdom. But actually, you enjoy going to cinema because most films in, po in Poland, all four films will be subtitled. And it's easy to find a screening near your home. And so that's that's a very interesting experience. When you look back to your early years, maybe as a teenager, uh, you already said that you enjoyed going to cinema with friends, watching those foreign films, because I guess you couldn't watch Polish films because they were not subtitled. You were subtitling only foreign films uh, at that time. And I guess on television, if you wanted to watch a series, uh, there was much, there was much, even much le uh, less subtitling than today. So would you say that we have made a lot of progress in general when it comes to technology and now a life of a hard of hearing person is easier or maybe because there's also more uh, online interaction and so on, maybe there are new difficulties that you didn't have in, in the past as a hard of hearing community? Um, the progress in Poland is visible to me, um, so there is no denying uh, the fact. When I met Agnieszka, I think um, in 2012, I think we met in uh, Warsaw when, when during the seminar I've organized, um, it was not as good as it is now, so there is a progress. But obviously we have to remember that UK have had the um, the Act, um, Communication Act in 2003, given 10 years to go to 80% or even 100% of subtitling. Therefore, you know, you are basically catching up, but you are catching up fast, which is really positive news. And I think, you know, the, the, the mentality, the, the um, approach towards people with um, hearing loss is also slowly changing. We're talking more about it when online platforms help us to mobilize, to speak more about it. So that definitely has helped. And of course, um, hard of hearing people now are becoming even more and more um, impatient because they communicate with each other. Um, and I always found the role of the umbrellas global umbrellas, international umbrellas, is important because they put together people who do not have any accessibility with people who have very good accessibility. And therefore, we can learn from each other. We can learn how to, to lobby, what is needed, and what we're actually missing. Because my motto is, what do you know when you actually don't know? And there are countries where hard of hearing people have no idea what my life is like in UK and what kind of accessibility I have, which I sometimes take for granted. Yeah, I have to jump in here and, and say um, that it does depend on the country, definitely, but it also depends so much on the language. We are now meeting on Zoom and we've got all the, the live, live captions uh, on and they're working quite well, I have to say, but then we are speaking in English. If we were to switch into Polish, that wouldn't work, right? So there's still, I suppose, a lot to be done in terms of other languages. Yes, you are absolutely right. And during the recent um, Slovenian presidency of the European Union, um, there was a really interesting conference on audiovisual media services directive, um, European Accessibility Act, which is also directive. And um, all the different discussions around this and one of the most important discussions was while we are showing UK um, as a good example and the leader in accessibility, we have to also understand that UK in some ways and Americans are lucky ones because those languages have been invested so much into that um, everybody can have that kind of um, access. But when it comes to minority languages, the investment and um, working around them and developing them, it's still not at the same level as with English language. So that, that is also another area where you, European, you know, European Federation of Hard of Hearing People is looking at, that um, we need to have those minority languages invested in. Mm 